Well, I was just about to sit down and uh, give you a few thoughts on uh, Spy Cat Your Service, and uh, I suddenly realised I actually haven't done a video where I talk about Apple Family Reunion yet, so uh, I figured I'd uh, put that right first. So Apple Family Reunion basically suffers from the problem of having an extremely thin plot, probably the thinnest plot that any episode uh, in the show's history has had, really. Uh, it is interesting, actually, the Applejack episodes, a lot of them do seem to suffer from a bit of a thin plot. Um, Applebuck season was another one, really. It was just a case of Applejack wouldn't accept help. But that at least did explore her character uh, to some degree. This one doesn't, really. It's just a sort of case of she's not very good at organising the Apple family reunion. Uh, it does touch on a couple of interesting ideas, which is this idea of uh, you don't really need to do anything particularly complicated or elaborate in order to enjoy yourself or have a good time if you're with people that you know, you know like, like friends and family. When it comes to having fun with people together, uh, there's a phrase uh, which I've heard a lot of people use in the past, which is keep it simple, stupid, kiss, which basically sort of means by making things overly complicated and by having a lot of elaborate different things uh, to have people do, they end up just sort of getting confused or, uh, you know, doing the, th being forced to sort of do the thing that is there in an effort to try and make them, sort of force them to have fun, as opposed to just spending time with people they know. That's re really the sort of core idea, I think, uh, to this episode, which they don't really sort of get into enough, I don't think. The idea that uh, when it comes to sort of spending time with your family, it is just simply about spending time with your family. You don't actually need to do anything. Uh, they do touch on that in the uh, letter at the end, which is a great letter. I think it's one of the best letters uh, that the show has had. I d attempting to do everything and have as much fun as possible. You maybe don't even have the time to enjoy the thing that is supposed to be being enjoyed while it lasts. You know, if you're in a rush to try and sort of do everything and have as much fun as possible, you don't even take the time to enjoy it while it's going on. An interesting sort of idea that it kind of touches on in this episode, but we don't really sort of get enough into it, I don't think. Uh, I do like the way that uh, Apple Bloom is playing a large role in an Applejack episode. Don't think we've seen that before. Uh, but again, for an Applejack episode, it doesn't really explore enough about her character. It's just that she's not very good at organising an Apple family reunion. Uh, good to see Babs again. You know, an interesting bit of continuity uh, from Cindy Morrow's previous episode of this season. I do sort of have to question why they're suddenly now favourite cousins, though, because... Uh, obviously back in One Bad Apple, she was there for two weeks, she spent most of the time she was there bullying Apple Bloom. I think they can only really have been friends for a couple of days, and suddenly now they're favourite cousins. I don't know, maybe they've been writing to one another. Uh, and I wonder maybe if uh, this is the sort of brief mention of these two other blank flanks that uh, Bab Seeds now has at her school. Are we actually going to see them maybe in a later episode, and we're going to see the CMC from Manhattan and the CMC from Ponyville sort of come face to face perhaps? That could be kind of cool. There are a few sort of uh, good moments, I think, and I think there's enough sort of enjoyable moments in this to not say that it's a bad episode, certainly. Uh, like uh, Granny Smith making herself look younger, baby Applejack. Uh, the Raise This Barn song, uh, having that sort of square dance style, just cool to see Applejack finally get a song. Not overly keen on that style of music, to be honest, uh, and the lyrics left a lot to be desired. I mean, how many times does she say, Raise This Barn, one, two, three, four? Uh, so the letter at the end was really good. That's the only sort of real major positive that I would take from this episode. Overall, the plot was just way too thin for my liking. Spy Cat Your Service actually is one of the uh, very sort of rare two-character episodes, I would say. You wouldn't assume from the title that it was actually going to be a focus on both Spike and Applejack equally. But it actually is. It's very much both a Spike and an Applejack episode at the same time. So in a way, Applejack gets two episodes in a row, and this is probably a better Applejack episode than the one that was just solely an Applejack episode, the previous one. Uh, so this is, uh, again, sort of focusing on the idea that Applejack won't accept help, but on this occasion she's not accepting help probably for the right reason, and that's the fact that uh, she's done something to help out Spike, and Spike feels the need to show gratitude towards this in some kind of over-the-top, elaborate kind of way. And Applejack sort of insisting that Spike doesn't need to do it, but at the same time Spike insisting that he does need to do it. And that is kind of an interesting di dilemma that you see sometimes with friends and family that uh, a person is insisting they don't need help, but the other person insisting that they give it anyway. It's kind of a tr one person trying to be nice and the other person trying to be nice at the same time, and the two sort of cancelling each other out, and as a result, creating a dilemma. And uh, it is sort of an interesting idea, which is that sort of idea that with uh, friends and family, it is very much just a sort of done thing that characters help each other out. In fact, when it comes to saving someone's life, I think it's a basic sort of act of 
basic human decency that you, if you see someone in trouble and you think you can help them, then you do it. The problem, of course, with this is this is the kind of plot that has been seen in kids' shows quite a lot uh, in the past. And I was kind of hoping they might take a different approach to it in this episode. Uh, but in all honesty, they don't really. It does go down the same kind of route of the person trying to help this other person out actually ending up being more trouble than they're worth. You know, their help actually being a hindrance. Which goes against Spike's character, really. Uh, so that really just just creates even more of a problem, really. I think, actually, it would have been more interesting if Spike had actually been pretty good at helping Applejack out, and uh, Applejack still not wanting Spike's help, you know, even though it may have actually been pretty useful. Yeah, Spike does come across as a bit too childish in this episode. I have liked, sort of, Spike's childlike nature for the most part in this show, but I think they went a bit too far in this episode with him acting like a child. Rainbow Dash's uh, little story that she's now writing about uh, someone joining the Wonderbolts and Rarity sarcastically remarking, oh, I wonder how you came out with that. And that's sort of like two uh, nods of continuity. First of all, to read it and weep. You know, Rainbow Dash likes reading now, so she also is now moving on to writing. And also a nod to uh, Wonderbolts Academy, because obviously now she has applied to become a Wonderbolt. You know, we never actually find out, does she actually become a Wonderbolt or not? Uh, so... Two continuity nods there, and they're actually pretty subtle as well. So I, I, I really like that. It's the, uh, but it does go down the sort of cliched route that uh, the plot generally in, the, in kids shows that this follows, which is uh, pretending that you need your life saved as well. Uh, but is it, it's interesting actually the way that Spike isn't fooled by this. You know, the timber wolf is so obviously fake, and yet the reason why Spike is able to figure out that it's a fake is for the... One reason that uh, we wouldn't have guessed, that you couldn't smell its breath. You know, it's obviously fake, but Spike figures out that it's not fake for the last reason that would occur to you. And it's obvious that uh, the rest of them were not taking the situation particularly seriously, with Applejack's acting not being the best, and uh, Rarity and Pinkie Pie actually smiling as they run away in fear. Uh, the Timberwolves themselves, of course, look really cool. They looked uh, a lot better than they looked in Apple in uh, Family Appreciation Day. There's an interesting little subtle little gesture that the uh, Timberwolf makes when it's choking, which is just like like that, which is a typical thing that people will do when they've got something stuck in their throat. I do sort of feel that this episode needed a letter, though, uh, to properly sort of sum up the idea of uh, wanting to help someone and that person not wanting the help, but the other person still insisting that they help them. An interesting idea, I think, and uh, a letter would have been nice to just sort of sum it up. You know, generally I haven't liked the way they've sort of forced... The letters in there in uh, previous episodes and they seem to have retracted maybe a bit too much in this season by having like hardly any letters at all even when occasionally they could have been pretty useful to just sum up the lesson uh, but overall i didn't really like the way that uh, this episode went very much down the same sort of standard route that uh, the plot in it that this plot in other kids shows has gone down uh, in the past. I think it would have been more interesting if Spike had actually been fairly competent at helping out Applejack. So it, it works well definitely as an Applejack episode, perhaps not quite as well as a Spike episode. So Apple Family Reunion was kind of a missed opportunity, I thought they could have gone into much more detail about the ideas that that episode touches on, and definitely Cindy Morris' weakest episode to date. It's actually really disappointing because I was really wanting her to write an Applejack episode for quite a while. Spike at your service, it is a plot that's been done before, but it was done okay, I thought. Didn't really explore Spike's character in the way I would have liked it to, but it definitely uh, was an interesting window into Applejack's character. Definitely an interesting window into those two characters' uh, kind of relationships. Oh, and one last thing. Um, you may have noticed I posted a review of uh, May the Best Pet Win yesterday. Uh, there's actually a better version of it, uh, which uh, you can find a link to in the description, uh, which has uh, actual video clips in it. Okay, that's it, guys. I will see you again soon. Bye.